Hey table friends and family, this is Pastor Doug and I'm here today on St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And by the way, shout out to Britt and Mike Nelson. This is their third wedding anniversary. Just wanna say happy anniversary to you guys. Hope you guys are wearing green wherever you are in quarantine today. Um, uh, making sure you're celebrating that unless you don't celebrate uh, St. Patrick's Day and, and that event, I don't know. Hey, as you can tell, there's just a lot of uh, craziness going on. I think that's the best word. Uh, we woke up uh, last Thursday and thought, oh, it's gonna be normal. And then by the end of Thursday, we were going, this isn't normal. And then on Friday, it was a completely new normal. And I don't know about you, my head's spinning. I think around here, our, our staff team and our life group leaders, their heads are spinning and we're trying to figure out like, where do we go from here? And the answer is, you know, we don't know. The, the biggest problem is uh, our whole ministry is based on gathering. We have a big group gather, we have a medium group gather, missional communities, we have small group gatherings and life groups and we're not able to do that um, the way we used to do that. Uh, and there's kind of two places to go or two approaches. Uh, approach A says, well, let's just wait tomorrow to get better. And approach two is, this is the new normal for right now, and we're going to lean into that. And we're electing uh, to go with option two, which is to say, hey, for the next little while, this is the new normal, and um, we're going to try to lean into it. And so if we can't meet in, with more than 10 people, then uh, we're going to have to figure out a strategy to do that. But the, the really good news is the table is uniquely positioned to do that. We have this amazing life group system, and we have a uh, a lot of tech savvy young adults who can figure out 27 different ways to connect. And so we are going to be rolling out uh, a strategy in the next few days of trying to um, gather both digitally and physically uh, and to bring uh, increasingly more and more people into those spaces, either digital life groups or uh, physical life groups. And we're going to come up with a model. We'll release some of those details in the next few days. But as it stands right now, here's what I think you can expect. Uh, because we can't gather on Tuesday nights, we are going to shoot some videos and release them on YouTube. It's what you're watching now. Uh, and we are going to be um, releasing those every week. In fact, we may do two or three a week, but definitely one on Tuesday that's going to be the main one. We're asking life groups to meet. Try to meet as best you can if you're available to gather in groups of 10 uh, with safe people, meaning people who, don't, who, who aren't in, infected, who don't have temperatures and things like that. Just asking you to kind of self-referee that stuff. But gather with safe healthy people, watch the video, and then we'll provide discussion questions at the end. And so we're going to try this. Maybe this works and maybe we uh, can see some really cool things happen that can get us through this, uh, this stretch. Um, uh, and we'll kind of evaluate week to week and see what happens from there, but that's our plan. So here's what I want to talk about that's going to happen today that you're going to watch right now. We've pre-recorded uh, two messages. Uh, really, they're dialogues. We've noticed that if you watch any of the live stream Sunday, just a guy or a girl speaking into a large room where there's nobody there, it's just kind of empty. We think the podcast dialogue approach is a little more engaging. And so we've recorded uh, two dialogues, kind of two podcasts, video podcasts that you guys are about to watch. The first one is with our senior pastor, David Youth. And really what I asked him in this is to help us make sense of this uh, theologically and as a pastor and kind of help set the horizon towards Jesus for us so that we can all kind of not operate out of fear or out of callousness, but somewhere kind of in that median ground. Uh, and then the second podcast you guys are going to watch tonight, both of them about 15 minutes long, uh, is with me and my friend, Dr. Tamara Richards, who is a, a medical doctor and a surgeon in town, just trying to help us make sense of the, the medical side of this. Uh, in future podcasts, we may deal with some of the economic um, issues that are going on. I might bring some guests on because I think we're all feeling kind of nervous about the economy and kind of what is it going to mean for finances. We may look at people in the tourist industry or things that have been hit hard by that. I don't know. We're going to try to get the people in that we can uh, meet with. If you guys have ideas, feel free to hit us up on DM on Instagram and let us know, hey, you should talk to this person or you should address this idea. That works. Uh, that has worked so well in our, our I've Always Wondered uh, series. And so we just want to be responsive to you guys. Because again, at the end of the day, we're trying to help you guys follow Jesus better. And we don't have all wisdom. So if you guys have wisdom on this, we want to hear about it. We want to connect with you. We're going to try to create some different digital spaces for us to connect. Uh, we may be uh, checking in with you guys with FaceTime or text or things like that. 
uh, one of the main things you can do here is just to stay connected digitally or physically as, as wise as you can. Check in on people, ask them how they're doing. Uh, and after the podcast, I'll give you some more information on that. Hey guys, hey table audience. We're here with uh, our pastor, my pastor, David Youth, just having a casual conversation uh, on a Monday, shooting this on a Monday. You guys are watching it Tuesday night. Um, pastor David, I just kind of want to jump in. Well, first, t tell us about this. Y you've been meeting with a lot of people. Are you like, are you okay <laughs> talking about this kind of stuff? I mean, as a as a human being, are you what okay? Are we, what are we talking about? Then well, just the whole, uh, you know, you got the COVID nineteen going oh, yeah, on, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you got yeah. church yeah. and all this stuff. You, yeah, you know. Doug. You know, this is the world we're living in. This is the craziness. And um, in fact, talking about it sometimes for me helps me to process and deal with it. I'm so glad you said that because yeah. um, I think some of the people listening to this, I know I'm feeling this and people in the room, I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to process through this. Like yeah. how would, I mean, in general, how do you kind of begin to make sense of this as a pastor and as a human oh, being? Oh, wow. Well, number, the first thing, I'm a seven, so it's killing me. <laughs> All the parties have ended, you know, come on, I, I'm looking for a party. Yeah. Um, seriously, it's, to me, it's, um, you know, we use the word surreal way too much. For me, I really feel like I'm gonna wake up and it was just a big dream. Hmm. When I walked in that room yesterday and I looked in that worship center, yeah. And there's nobody in there at 9.45 on a Sunday morning. Yeah. It hit me. Yeah. And I'm telling you, it was, it was a moment. I had to just take a deep breath and just kind of stare and think, okay, this, this is real. This is happening. And so I, for me, it's a, it's a lot about processing. It's a lot about who I talk to. Um, I'm done with the news. I can't, I can't take any more. Of, of all the people, you know, the so-called experts. Like on Twitter or? or no, no, just, no. Well, well. no, I don't follow Twitter that much anyway. It's more of those people saying, well, this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen. We don't know, we haven't, nobody's been here. So we're kind of like walking step by step, yeah. best we can tell, which is not a bad way to live if you're a Christian. That's true. We walk by faith, not by sight. So I'm curious, we got, I'm certainly in this camp. Would you maybe recommend limiting some of the exposure to news? Oh, maybe yes. not cutting yourself oh, yeah. off, but yeah. Like. Yeah, you, you can't cut yourself off. You just have to limit because, you know, once you've been through a news cycle, that's all you need. Gotcha. Move on, give it a little while, and then go back. So just to be clear, I shouldn't wake up in the middle of the night in a panic, turn on my phone, and then start scrolling through Twitter and then reading every article. That'd be bad? No, you know, I got, I got so many news <laughs> services that give me the notifications. Uh, there's one called Smart News where you get to pick the different sources. There's one, um, it's Apple News where you get to pick your sources. But I've even found myself with them going, I, I don't know, I don't know if I can believe any of them. I mean, I hate mm. to be that yeah, way. Yeah, no. I don't know if I can believe any of them, but I knew I, I do know who I can believe. I just know he understands and knows what's going on. So I just have to find worship music is helping me a lot right now. Hey, let's talk about that. That was gonna be my yes. last question, but yeah. I want to know. Let's, like, what do you what are you listening to on Spotify? We got people quarantined. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm I don't use Spotify as much as I use Pandora and uh, and then Apple Music. I do Apple Music a lot because I can uh, immediately buy it <laughs> <laughs> or not buy it, yeah. but get it. You know, yeah. download it. Um, I tell you, the, the stuff that's really kind of got my attention that new uh, this new group called uh, There Be Lions. Uh, have you heard of them? No. Uh, there Be Lines. They did a song with Darlene Check that is called um, I Speak Jesus. And I guess I'm drawn right now to songs that are hopeful, songs mm -hmm. that, that remind me of His power. That song really says I speak Jesus over my family, I speak it over my community, uh, I speak it over my church. And Here Be Lines, cool story. It, it's a band that they got their name. You, you remember, you'll know this because your history. When they first did maps, if they didn't know an area, they would put here be lines. Yeah. Because they, you know, they didn't know what was there. Yeah. They knew there might have be dangers and whatever there. And that's how they got their name. That's awesome. Uncharted places, yeah. places that nobody had ever been. Um, Interesting. So anyway, the, the song is called uh, I Speak Jesus. There's another one that I've really been listening a lot to. Uh, Brian and Katie Torwalt, every once in a while, their writing really get, gets me. And they wrote one. Um, 
recently called, um, <laughs> it's lost the name of it. Um, well, I'm looking this up. Brian and Katie Torwalt, how you spell yes, it? Yes, Because I yes. think they're probably looking this up too. Yeah, what is the song? I mean, I've got it on my, on my playlist. I have, uh, I have a worship playlist and I have a special worship playlist. And if you make the special worship playlist, it means you're, you're really in my <laughs> sweet spot. Your will, your way. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm nope. looking up songs. Uh, these would be new ones. Yes. Pro prophesy your promise. Mm -mm. When you walk into the room, Holy Spirit, I see Earth. Remember, let there be light. Remember. Remember. That's it. Okay. That's it. Which is ironic. We were like, I can't remember That's the name it. of the song. What are the chances? <laughs> and look, here's another one that um, has really helped me recently. Um, the I'm listening by uh, Chris McClarney and uh, and uh, the rapper girl, uh, Holland. Okay. Yeah, that's really because it's talking about listening every word. So in this season of 40 days of prayer and fasting, I've really been kind of listening. And that song, when it comes on, man, it really helps me to focus to hear every word. And and he's the one, Doug, not to be, you know, to be trite or uh, cliche, but. I just really need to hear from him yeah. in these days, and, yeah. and whether it's from his word, sometimes it's from something you say or Isaac says or something. One of my kids, Hannah, said something the other day that, man, I felt like God really spoke to me through that. Wow. So I'm just trying to hear him as much as I can That's from awesome. people around me. That's awesome. I, I, I got to say this just for people watching on camera. So the first time I walked into your office suite, mm -hmm. like four years ago, I heard really loud music and I thought, oh my goodness, one of the admins needs to turn down their music because like, exactly. like that's not appropriate in a workplace. And then I kept going deeper and deeper into the cave and I said, is that coming from Pastor David's office? They're like, yeah, it's at 11, all the time. All the time, <laughs> all the time. If you can't feel it, you can't hear it. I love it. Okay, so I'm curious uh, on that note, like you seem to lead, just from my observation, you seem to lead kind of mystically, supernaturally, Holy Spirit, just like kind of the other and I don't know a lot of pastors, leaders of organizations mm -hmm. who do that. So like in this moment right now, how are you leading yourself? How are you leading your family? Mm -hmm. How are you trying to lead others? Like yeah. what are some kind of driving principles or thoughts? Yeah, I would have, been, I would have made a great Celtic Christian. Uh, they were really known for that. They were, they were mysticism, not in a bad sense, but in the Christian sense. They were very much driven by, as uh, Batterson said, the wild goose, which is what they call the Holy Spirit. And they, pursued him and chased him and you know knowing that you by the time you catch him he turns hmm. so what I've been trying to do and with my family and myself and even us you know leading the church is be open to what be open to something that God's doing or saying that I've never seen hmm. um, the, the the danger the tendency is the longer we know him we get predictable he doesn't we do Hmm. The longer I have been a pastor, I get predictable. Hmm. But he's not. And so what I have to fight against is getting in that predictable pattern, especially when something hits like this, this situation yeah. with uh, COVID-19. I, I, I can't rely on something that I've been through before because this is different and God is moving and he's not predictable. You know, a lot of people find that hard to believe that God's hmm. not predictable. He's not. Hmm. When you read the scripture, it's very interesting how he moves. A lot of people think miracles happened evenly through script. No, they didn't. Hmm. There are seasons of miracles. Interesting. And they're always tied to God doing a new thing. Interesting. A new work. I think God is going to do a new work through what we're going through right now. Wow. I think you're going to look back in history and COVID-19, and that's not the virus itself that caused it, but the reaction I think it's going to change us. Huh. And I don't know that we'll ever go back to the way we were. Wow. Because all of a sudden there is a heightened awareness of the global community. I mean, who would have thought? Yeah. Who would have thought a, something that started in, you know, Wuhan, China, I don't even know where Wuhan is, nope. would affect me. Yeah. Wake up. It's yeah, here. you've got people. I know way more about the Italian economy and the UK <laughs> yes. healthcare system yes. than I ever yes. wanted to know in my yes. life. But I, I, I guess that's right because this is all hitting us. 
there's a sense in which we all feel connected by yes, this. Yes, it is. And you're which, right, I haven't thought on, about that. In the bad way, connected because of the virus, but in a good way, connected by hope. And it just says to me, David, this is the gospel. The, this is the audience, our world. Wow. They need hope. They need something that points to something bigger than themselves and bigger than just what you can put under a microscope. Yeah. Isn't it kind of interesting that we got the best researchers in the world, we got the most brilliant scientists. We, I mean, 90% of all the scientists have ever lived are alive right now. Yeah. I Man, it's a crazy statistic. Wow. And they can't figure it out. I mean, they're, they're, they're wrestling, they're grappling yeah. with it, they're struggling with it. But there's a little bit of that that is like, that's okay. Yeah. Because that's the nature of this world we're in. There are things that transcend us that we don't know. Yeah, you're totally right. There's, you know, I would even say, you know, you have a PhD, I have a PhD. We've been in rooms where people go, well, I, I basically know everything. And <laughs> you get into that academic community that there's a sense of confidence because you know what you don't know and you know what you know. But this thing right here, I think for the first, the first time in a long time for me, yeah. there's a global sense that there's something invisible and other moving. That's right. And it's caused a lot of humility in people. Yeah. Um, a lot more than I thought. Yeah, have, have you found, this is so crazy, have you found that living in Florida, I keep wanting to see it on a map. Yeah. It moving, like a hurricane. Yeah. Because we're used to hurricanes coming, and, and so I want to see it. Show me where it is. Show me how it's And so anytime they put a map up there, and they show the states where yeah. it is, it's almost like, okay, I feel better because I, I can, it's almost becoming tangible. I yeah. Can, we really struggle with things that aren't tangible. We yeah. struggle with things we can't put on a map or we can't put on a spreadsheet or a piece of paper. And I think that's what's, for a mystic like me, what's pretty cool is that we're having to wake up to a reality that's beyond anything we can understand. Yeah, it's a framework that is so easy to talk about the gospel now. Yes. Okay. You can't yes. see coronavirus, but you can see its effects. You can't see God, you can see his effects. So That's look right. at the effects, it takes That's you back right. to the cause. There yeah. you go. That's awesome. So wrapping up here, because um, I, I know you've got lots oh. of things to do, and you got people to, oh, you got on, family. You, you know, there's- I'd rather hang out with than you. That's true, and I was gonna say, there's basketball tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, too hey, soon, no, too soon to make no, that joke. No basketball. What are you doing with no sports? Oh man, don't remind me. Um, <laughs> Cleaning out closets, like I said. Oh yeah. Closets, yeah. Is, is that real? Like, are you you really making that happen? Well, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm yeah. kind of going through things and starting to kind of put things together. Actually, one of the things we're doing, which uh, you know, is just spend a lot more time with family, but um, but movies that I don't I don't ever binge watch anything. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I'm too hyper and won't <laughs> sit there long enough to do. It. <laughs> but I've actually started going back. We started going back and just watching things. We've always said, one day we want to watch that, and it's 20 years old, and we finally said, well, let's watch that. Cool. So it's kind of a cool time to, to do that yeah. and to reconnect with people. Yeah. You know, maybe um, that's what we're going to learn from this is that uh, we can do without all this stuff, you know? Yeah. It's nice. It's great if you're a fan of basketball, but it's not really life. Yeah. I mean, it's entertainment. I've probably spent more time with my family in the last four days than I've ever spent with them yes. since my son was born. Yeah. I mean, we had all the family over last night, and, you know, I just thought, this is so much fun, just hanging out and enjoying family and kicking back. And plus, I'm seeing some friends, hanging out with people. Uh, we got a neighborhood Bible study that I'm looking, we do Wednesday nights, and um, I'm looking forward to it because I know there's a lot of fear in our neighborhood. And that's been an overwhelming thing to see you know, I said a minute ago about we, we can't figure out this, this virus. I don't think we knew about I, I don't I couldn't figure out people. Yeah. I've seen things in people I never I I never would have expected. Wow. I mean I would you ever have expected they would cancel March Madness? No. They would cancel the NBA. They would can the MLS I mean everything. Yeah. I would have never dreamed something no. like that happened. And then I never would have dreamed that I need 300 rolls of toilet paper to survive. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. I, yeah. You know, I missed that per somewhere person. along the way. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. You reminded me I need to make a Costco run later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good luck with that. Thank you. Um, on that note, last thing you might say to some young adults, especially table audiences watching yeah. this. Yeah. Well, number one, you guys, I'm one of your biggest fans. I, I hear all about you guys from 
my sources. I have sources. <laughs> I have spies among you. Um, but I'm just, I just love what's happening, what you're doing. And you know why I think God has given you favor mm. is that you're honoring relationships, but you're honoring Him first, that mm. relationship that's vertical first. You know, it doesn't matter how relational we may be. As a seven, it comes natural for me. Yeah. But I realize that the most important relationship is that vertical. Mm. Without that vertical, I'm not really in a good place to mm. relate to those around me. But you guys are really pointing people to the right place to establish which relationship matters most. And then, and then, then you're building this incredible sense of community and belonging. I still believe, I, I still kind of follow Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. I think he had a point and I think one of the greatest needs of the human existence, the human condition is I need to belong. Yep. I, I just need to know that I belong somewhere. And you guys have found an amazing way to make a home yeah. for people. Because you know we live in an area very disconnected. Yep. We're from all over the world. Yep. And yet all of a sudden we walk in up here and it feels like home. Yep. That's what happened Sunday to me. When I walked in that room and I didn't see anybody, I didn't feel at home. Yeah. I felt like I was in a big room. But when I look out and I see everybody, especially on ramp yeah. B. That's right, 11.30. 11.30. When I look up there and I see all you guys, I'm home. That's right. This feels like home. So thank you for making a home for people. Yeah, yeah. and maybe we'll be there again soon. So. Yes. Hey, this is fun. Hey, it is fun. You should come on again. We'll do this again. Great, we'll call it Happy it. Hour with Pastor David. Yeah. Hey, that sounds good. <laughs> well, Happy Hour. I'll have some oh, people no, on. Oh, no, you don't want that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, table family. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Tamara Richards. Uh, you may have seen her around uh, First Orlando campus. Yeah. You've been a member at First Orlando for how long? That's hard to answer because I guess I've been a member here for three years, but I also started coming to this church one week after I was born. Okay. And there was a long hiatus in there. So uh, <laughs> when I left, I went to college and med school and stuff. So okay. So only, back. only time you haven't been here is when you were college, in college. med school, residency, and then I guess after residency for a few years while we lived in Louisiana. Okay. And uh, I know this, but they don't know this. So tell us about your kind of background. Uh, in, in medicine and kind of how you got here. Okay, so I'm an OBGYN. I was... That's um, a girl doctor, right? That is a girl doctor. Okay. I only treat females. Okay. Um, I take care of women pretty much during all stages of life. Pregnancy, any kind of GYN complaints, anything like that. Deliver babies, do surgeries, all of that stuff. So um, I grew up here, moved away, went to college in Mississippi, went to med school in Mississippi, did my residency in Louisiana and then stayed on. I taught um, med school and residence for quite a few years and then we had a baby and my husband and I moved back here to be closer to my family. Okay, and your husband is Brian, Brian Richards. Richards who is taught at the table and yes. helps out in a lot, of, a lot of ways in our groups area. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. And just um, full disclosure, you guys are part of our small group we call our supper club? Yes. Okay, yes. awesome. So, um, yeah. A lot of a lot of pre-existing relationships are <laughs> happening here. Um, okay, so I want to highlight a couple things. So you're not only a surgeon, yeah, but you are also a professor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't teach as I don't teach really now, but I did. But you have. But I have. And I've, you've done administrative stuff, I would think, yeah, on some level. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in terms of like the uh, career ladder of an aspiring doctor, you've kind of you've kind of checked a lot of those boxes. Yeah. Okay. I guess. I guess you can say that. <laughs> okay, hold on. I just want to go, go deeper for the audience here. Okay. You went to Dr. Phillips High School? Yes. Okay. You're a National Merit Scholar? Semi-finalist. Oh, semi-finalist. Okay, cool. We just knocked Probably. your mythos a little down. Uh, but you're about Victorian. Okay, there we go. Make sure to put that in there. Okay. So, safe to say you're one of my 10 smartest, thought, most thoughtful friends? I don't know all your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. No, see, this is a good answer. This is a good answer. Um, so this is partly why I wanted to have you on because a lot of the folks who are watching this, they hear coronavirus, they have a lot of misconceptions, they're going to BuzzFeed and they're, how likely are you um, to have the coronavirus quiz, right, based on your favorite Harry Potter character, right? And that's the level of their information and that's not a knock on our friends here, it's just 
we don't know often where to go for right answers or how to get wise counsel and so partially want to have this conversation yeah. and just kind of inform them. So to be fair, you're an OBGYN. Mm -hmm. You're not a virologist. No. You're not a, what's the other word? Epi Epidemiologist. Okay. And describe what's the difference between those two or the similarities. So a vi virologist really doesn't, they're not medical. They are doing more of the science behind viruses yep. and whatever. An infectious disease doctor would be somebody who went to med school and then specialized in medicine and then infectious diseases who would be treating all of that stuff. Um, and then an epidemiologist is somebody who generally also didn't go to med school but deals with all the statistics and watching trends and all of that. Okay. That's much more mathematical type of stuff, not medicine. But they do follow medical trends. Right. So. so you can weigh into the math side, but probably where your expertise is is in the medical side, but specifically in, you yeah. know, you can talk about COVID-19 and women. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Because okay. there's not a lot of good studies. People don't like to do studies on pregnant women. Oh, Go interesting. Figure. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, so let's just maybe talk about this at a, at a 30,000 foot level, just mm -hmm. as a medical, a person who provides a span of care in the medical yeah. arena, kind of talks through what is COVID-19 like? How do we understand it? How's it different than the flu? So it is a respiratory virus. Coronavirus is, so when you talk about viruses, usually there's a kind of broad virus and then there's all kinds of different subtypes. So yep. coronavirus, the common cold would be a coronavirus. SARS would be a coronavirus. COVID-19 is a brand new novel virus that has never been seen in humans before. Okay. So flu, typically we think of flu as like influenza A, influenza B. Um, there's different variations that come out every year, but we have seen the flu for years and years and years. Mm. This is a brand new virus that we have no experience whatsoever, which is part of the issue because we have a vaccine for flu, which doesn't always work. I mean, we see plenty of people who get the flu who have the vaccine, but there's already a lot of herd immunity, people yeah. who have been exposed to the flu, who have had the flu, and so we, there's already some base level of immunity. In this virus, there's none of that. Right. I mean, none, none. Yeah. Okay, so we're kind of figuring out, as a medical community, how to, how to treat this on the fly. Yes. So we don't know, like we know how to treat flu. There are, um, I mean, there's different ways to treat the various symptoms, but we know how to treat flu. Okay. We know how to prevent flu. We don't even still know how to treat this virus. Okay. So that's part of the issue. And so what we're seeing different government agencies, what they're attempting to do is on the fly, come up with a protocol on how to best manage the spread of this. Is that what's going on? This, yes, okay. the spread and treatment, I guess. I mean, yeah. Okay, so we talked about this offline a few minutes ago. So what, what are some of the methods that government agencies or public health departments are recommending and kind of how does that work? So at this point, you know, it's hard to get tested. Um, so right now, I think it really varies from state to state, city to city. Um, at this one, I think if you're concerned, you should call your primary care doctor right. and then they'll kind of direct you where to go. Yeah. We're trying to avoid people going to the ER because that's clogging up the ER, putting a lot of people together um, and potentially exposing a lot of people. So yeah. right now at our hospital, we have people stationed outside of all the doors with masks um, who are, you know, doing surveys and whatever, talking to people, triaging them before they even come into the ER. Wow. So, yeah. What's it like going into work for you? It was pretty normal yesterday, but we also are not, we had an issue because we're not allowing, the hospital um, is not allowing kids to visit. And uh -huh. so we, our office is actually in the Women's Center, mm -hmm. which is part of the hospital. So we had patients who were coming to our office that had kids yeah. that they tried to keep from coming. Right. And so we had to deal with that. Interesting. So, it, but it's very interesting to pull in and see people at all the entrances. There's security. There's people in masks and stuff, talking to every single person going in. Yeah. Okay. So I'm curious. Uh, you've obviously seen the pictures of like South Beach and Clearwater Beach, and I think I texted you the O'Hare Airport yes. and like St. Patty's Day, which is today. We're taking yeah. this on St. Patty's Day. Uh, by the way, you're not wearing green. Wait. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you have green. There's a little yeah. green. I would point to that today. <laughs> I just, just make sure because people are going to come after you. Yeah. Um, kind of, 
what's your reaction as a human being? What's your reaction as a medical professional when you see people kind of hearing the recommendations? Hey, no gatherings fewer than 10. And they're like, okay. And then they still go to beaches. And I mean, how are you processing through that? I feel like it's dumb. Okay. I mean, I feel like people need to take this seriously. I feel like there's kind of two extremes. Yeah. One is like super panic where everybody's going to the stores and going crazy. And then there's the other people who are like, it's not a big deal. I don't need to worry about it at all. And somehow we have to kind of get in the middle. Yeah. But people are not very good at staying in the middle. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like there's a lot of people, especially if you're not in an area where it's hitting hard at right. this point in time, um, that they're just blowing it off. Right. So, like, what? You're obviously a Christian. Uh -huh. Okay. So you want to follow Jesus. How, how do you, as a medical professional, recommend? There's kind of a matrix here: loving your neighbor, mm -hmm. not panicking, but also not being dismissive. So I think, I mean. This is a disease that we still don't know where we're headed. Yeah. So we're trying to follow Italy and all this other stuff. I don't know at this point if we'll really get there. Um, yeah. Part of the issue is that we aren't seeing symptoms for 10 to 14 days. And so you can be walking around completely asymptomatic, spreading it to everybody else. So what's asymptomatic mean? No symptoms. So you have no idea that you are sick. Yeah. That's also different than the flu. Usually the flu, you get sick pretty quickly. And so once you get sick, you stay at home, you're not going out because yep. you feel terrible. With this, you could have the disease, be able to spread it to other people without ever being or feeling sick. And we're seeing that a lot in the younger population where they're either having just the common cold symptoms um, or they're not feeling sick at all, but they're spreading it to other people, specifically right. older people. Right. Um, the numbers that are coming out are about 80% of people will have either no real symptoms or just mild cold symptoms, and about 20% of people are going to require hospitalization. So I think that as- after the disease starts to present? Yes. Okay, I got you. That at some point they'll require hospitalization. And that's one of the biggest issues is not so much that, you know, probably the rough estimates are about 70% of people are going to eventually be positive for the disease. But this whole idea of flattening the curve is to not overload hospitals with all of those people all at one time. Right. Because we're still dealing with the flu, we're still dealing with a lot of other respiratory stuff, so our hospitals are already getting close to max capacity regardless of this disease. Yeah. And so we have a lot of healthcare workers who don't have masks, who don't have anything, and they're expected to take care of these really sick individuals. They don't have protective equipment, yeah. and they also don't have ventilators and everything else to provide for the people who are sick. So I think as believers, taking that into consideration, we, not to panic, but we probably don't need to be going out with a whole bunch of people in major public places. Um, you know, if we're thinking about other people ahead of ourselves or as much as ourselves, then part of that sometimes requires being uncomfortable. And part of being uncomfortable means staying home. Yeah. I mean, we, we like our individualism. We like to not be told what to do here. We like that, but that is not, I don't think that's loving our neighbor at this point. Mm -hmm. Loving our neighbor should be I'm worried about my 75 year old neighbor and I don't want to go anywhere that I could potentially get it and then spread to them. Right. Yeah. We love our legacy adults. Right. Young adults. We love our legacy adults. Right. So uh, you mentioned hospitals are already packed because I think maybe what we're thinking or what our visual of it is the hospital's just empty and yeah. then all these, uh, you know, Corona patients are going to show up, but actually we've They're got flu full. patients. Mm -hmm. You're people delivering are still, babies? People are still deliver, having babies. People are still getting sick with other things besides COVID-19. Yeah. So all of life is still going on. I mean, it's bad because this is also hitting during flu season yep. as opposed to the summer when we don't see that influx. So we already have a big influx of patients. And then to add that on top. Yeah. I mean, the issue is, you know, see, people talk about seasonal flu, kills more people. Potentially... We know those numbers at the end of the flu season. We haven't even, per all the other charts, we haven't even gotten close to the peak of this. So we can't really project, num I mean, we can't say this kills more than that because we don't know. We're not at the end of this. Right. Um, 
but still flu season lasts over a four to six month time frame. In Italy, they had 2,000 deaths in the span of 10 to 12 days. Yeah. So when you have that many people and only so many ventilators, then you're out of luck, yeah. which is what they're seeing. Yeah. And that may not happen all over the country, but that will certainly happen in certain cities. And yeah. so when you're traveling, going from city to city, you're potentially spreading all of that, even though you may not have any symptoms. Right, interesting, okay. Um, last question. That mm -hmm. was very helpful, by the way. That was really good. I know you're not an epidemiologist. Yeah. Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay. Or a virologist? Yeah. Okay. Is there a party that's like, uh, I went to med school, so that's a different kind of branch of things, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, we did study some of that, but yeah. like that was so long ago, I don't rem Yeah. So just to be fair, because we have people who are taking statistics, you probably yeah. weren't as happy about statistics as well. Or did you I, like statistics? I did, but I haven't taken it since, ooh. 2004? Okay. I mean, that was When you were time. 10. When you were when 10. I was 10. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay. exactly. Um, uh, we have a lot of people who are going to be in life groups. We're trying to roll out digital life groups and then asking our life groups to meet in groups of 10 or less, just trying to be as, yeah. as good a neighbor as we can be. Um, probably your, our life group's going to meet, maybe, at some point, right? Yeah. What's, what's the best... What's the best thing that can happen in a life group period but also think about it in the next two months what do you what would you say is good about your life group and what do you hope for maybe some of our I mean, people I think it's important because when we're all quarantined or trying to stay home social distancing I think it, it increases the risk for loneliness it increases the risk for feelings of isolation so I think you know I know a lot of people do stuff digitally anyways now but I think keeping that contact even digitally is vitally important. Right. I mean, I feel really bad for all the people in the nursing homes and stuff that are on lockdown, so they're not getting any of their visitors. They're, and so they're gonna run huge risks of depression and loneliness and stuff, so I, and that can be just as harmful to people's health um, as other things as well. So I think it's vitally important to stay connected somehow. Yeah. Um, I think the smaller you keep your circle, the better. Um, I think in terms of GYN, so this may be gross, but uh, no, this STDs. Is perfect. This okay, love this. so you think of STDs, you think, you know, you have sex with somebody else, you don't know who those people are having sex with. It's the same sort of thing. Like you're going out to dinner with your 10 friends, but those 10 friends may be going out to dinner with 10 other friends, and so you're still spreading stuff. Even though it's not maybe quite as concentrated as 5,000 people, there's still the potential for spread. So that's the idea between, behind keeping your circle small so that you can't still continue to spread. Right. I mean, it's going to spread. The idea is just to slow down that spread so that you're not getting 3,000 patients all at once. Right. You may still get 3,000 patients, but 3,000 patients over the span of four months as opposed to two weeks is a lot easier to handle. Right. You heard it here f uh, first, folks. Practice safe gatherings, okay? <laughs> Uh, this is from, straight from Dr. Tamara, who can speak on this. Okay, <laughs> this is a great place to end. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? No, I don't think so. I okay. think, um, I mean, we'll obviously know more. I think if we're following the same trend as Italy and a lot of other countries, yeah. over the next week to 10 days, we'll know. Yeah. I mean, it'll either take off like it has in the other countries or we'll not. We'll be on the and, other side. Yep. and, you know, if we don't, then maybe our preparation, you know, it's hard to say. Then you, everybody says, well, you're overreacting. Well, that overreacting, overreacting may have just been what saved us from getting there. Yeah. I'd rather people say we overreacted and fewer people got sick than to underreact and we have way more of an yeah. issue. Yeah, it's more loving this way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Tamara, this is fun. <laughs> Hey, if uh, you know something else happens where we just have a lot of pregnancies or something, can we bring you on again? Absolutely, talk about okay. I would love to talk about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you guys the next pod. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed those podcasts. It was really fun getting to hang out with my friends and just talk about those issues. Uh, if you're like me, you have this. You, you I'm vacillating between uh, being feeling really calm and focused on who Jesus is and then freaking out and then going back and forth and trying to manage that tension. And so if that's you, it's totally okay. It's totally okay to be a human being. Um, you know, you can worship Jesus when you're going into a storm. You can worship Jesus when you're coming out of a storm and you can worship Jesus when you're in the midst of a storm. Um, all of that's okay and all of that's holy and all of that's okay before God. And so we're in a little bit of a storm here. Uh, this is maybe the longest hurricane watch party we've ever had in Orlando. 
Uh, that's the way I like to think about it. So uh, for the next eight days or 14 days or whatever, we're just, we're in a hurricane watch party and we're watching Netflix or listening to, how about this? We're reading books because we all want to read more books. That's what we're doing. Uh, I want to read from one book, uh, actually the Bible here. Uh, and I want to give you guys something uh, to talk about that both Pastor David and Dr. Tamara uh, touched on. Uh, there's this really interesting phrasing if you have Bibles in Luke 10, the story of the Good Samaritan. This lawyer comes to Jesus and he wants to know how he can inherit eternal life and Jesus asks him some follow-up questions and he answers correctly. But in verse 29 it says, desiring to justify himself, he said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus tells the story of the Good Samaritan, which you guys know. This man was beaten up as he was traveling and left on the side of the road for dead. Um, a rabbi came by, a priest came by, and they walked on the other side. But the Samaritan, this person between two cultures, maybe someone from an international missional community, came by and scooped up the Samaritan and took him to a hospital. As Dr. Tamara told us, there were people outside in masks who met him, and they said, does he have COVID-19? And they said, no, he's okay. And they did the testing, he's fine. So, And the Samaritan paid for that guy to um, uh, have all the medical care he needed and then told the medical staff, hey, if there's anything else that he needs, I'll come back again, just let me know and I'll pay his bill. And so Jesus is kind of summarizing this to the lawyer and he asks him, uh, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? Which of these three was the best, most loving example of Jesus Christ as a neighbor to this very vulnerable person here. I mean, when you're beaten on the side of the road, you're the most vulnerable you can be because you can't do anything. And so the lawyer responds to that question, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to that man? And the lawyer says, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus's commandment to him was to go and do likewise. And y'all, as I'm thinking about this, especially as a younger person, now I'm not as young as y'all, but you know, I look it because I'm awesome. Um, just kidding. Uh, that's probably not going to pick up in the, uh, in the dynamic here of just a one person soliloquy. But um, as I think about young people, I think about our crowd, um, we're invincible to COVID-19. We're not worried about the medical stuff. We'll all get over it. But our legacy adult friends, um, the person who's immunocompromised, we've got people on our staff and our leadership who are immune, immune compromised and they, they can't be around us because they, they might get sick and if they get sick, it's in trouble. I mean, people you know at the table um, have some immune deficiencies that'll, that'll um, put them in a, in a dangerous position. So what's it look like to show mercy to our neighbor? It's to be like the Good Samaritan. It's to figure out the best way to love my neighbor and to take care of it. And I don't know what that looks like in a digital space, but it seems like trying to be quarantined, taking all the extra precautions we can, um, you know, doing everything we can to just love our neighbors and our friends in Orlando. Again, we are, we are here for the city of Orlando. We love the city. The city gives us so much highways and restaurants and coffee shops and theme parks and things like that. But man, we've got to be good stewards of the city. Uh, and so, uh, I want to encourage you to think about what it looks like for you to express mercy towards your neighbor in the next eight days to 14 days as we think about this thing. And, um, who knows, God might do something amazing in shaping our character. Maybe that'll become something that shapes us uh, for the rest of our lives. And so um, that's going to be the big question I want you guys to think through. What does it look like to show mercy to my neighbor in the midst of a COVID-19 uh, situation? So you guys, I want to encourage you to think about that uh, and have fun discussing in your life groups, whether in gathered or digitally. And we'll see you guys on the next pod. We love you. We're praying for you. Bye, table fans.